Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're joined today by the Mayor of London, Ed Holder, the Medical Officer of Health of the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey, and the Warden of Middlesex County, Kathy Burkhart Jessen. And we welcome not only our presenters, but also you, the media, who are joining us this afternoon. And we do invite you to ask your questions using the question form here on Microsoft Teams. Just submit your uh, name and your media outlet, and if you could indicate who your question is directed to. We'd also like to welcome the folks who are joining us this afternoon on Rogers Television. We're also watching on the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, listeners to Global News Radio, AM 980 CFPL, and those who are watching on the CTV London website. Well, let's get to the opening remarks right away, and we'll start today with Mayor Ed Holder. Well, thank you, Dan, and good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to begin, begin today by offering sympathies and condolences on behalf of the City of London to the families of the victims of the explosion which occurred in Beirut, Lebanon yesterday. What we know now is that dozens of lives were lost and thousands uh, more injured. Uh, as so many of you are aware, London's largest ethnic group uh, is Arabic, and thousands and thousands of Londoners uh, come from Lebanese descent. Our hearts absolutely go to them uh, at this time of grief and sorrow. So I've directed uh, our city flag to be flown at half mast uh, from today through until Friday as a measure of respect and sincere sympathies. Let me also extend my thanks to Councillor Josh Morgan, who sat in for me uh, uh, on Friday while I was on a conference call, excuse me, yesterday on a conference call with uh, uh, 19 mayors of host communities that have uh, gaming uh, businesses uh, in Ontario. As uh, so many of you are aware, Gateway Casino at Western Fair, like most casinos in the province, has yet to open, even though they've been eligible to do so as a result of our region entering stage three of the provincial recovery plan. This is due to the fact that a maximum of in indoor gathering of 50 persons as permitted by provincial regulations does not translate into a viable operation uh, or business model uh, for this type of business. We're hearing about uh, plans that, that casinos are making that would respect physical distancing and, and uh, maximum crowd size regulations within the province, which has the possibility of providing casinos a workable strategy for their operations. Look, these plans are going to be discussed with the respect medical officers of health uh, in each of Ontario's host communities. And to be fair, I've not yet had that discussion with our medical officer of health. Um, and I know that there will be discussions with the medical officer of health in Ontario. So there will be more information uh, on this issue coming uh, in the days and weeks ahead, but I wanted to give a heads up there. So those are two items that uh, that uh, we deal with, that we're dealing with uh, right now. So I'd like to, if I might, pass this over to Warden Kathy. Great and good afternoon. Thank you very much for that, uh, Mayor Ed. It's great to be with you today. Um, not a lot to report from the county. Uh, things are business as usual and um, we are uh, thrilled and um, it's very positive to see how our residents and businesses are still adhering to uh, protocols that have been set forth for us uh, by our medical officer of health uh, here in Middlesex London and of course provincially and then federally. Just want to keep up the message of the importance of the physical distancing, reminder of our social but uh, of our social bubble. You know, I had um, quite a number of conversations this weekend with a number of residents. They, you know, popped into the grocery store or um, saw them when I was out and about. Um, the, maybe the confusion over what is a social bubble and the fact that you know you can still participate in um, gatherings of you know 50 when you're inside or 100 when you're out and there was some confusion over that it's really uh, important to remember that our social circle are the 10 people that are probably the most important people to you that you can get close with Certainly, it's fine to be out at a restaurant or an event if they're out if, if it's outside with with a gathering, 
but it's important in the oh. hearings to remember the importance of physical distancing. And of course, with the masks, you know, we've seen a great uptake with people wearing masks. We cannot lose uh, sight of that and we can we have to remain vigilant with that. So that not only happens for customers going into a retail business or an enclosed space, but also for the staff that are working in those environments as well. You know, we keep those up and especially with our hand washing, we can look forward to the fall and hopefully have positive news in the fall. And I think that's all from the county at this point. So Dr. Mackey, looking forward to what you have to say today. Thanks very much, Madam Warden and Mr. Mayor. Uh, we've had continued good numbers locally and provincially. Just one new case today in the London and Middlesex area and across the province now three days with less than 100 cases uh, each day. So that's all very encouraging, especially as we continue to see more and more activity uh, happening. Uh, thank you, uh, Warden Burke Justin, for raising the issue of the separate uh, categories of uh, the social bubble and of uh, broader social gatherings. It's really about that two meter, two meter physically distancing bubble. Uh, you know, the, so the social bubble concept is those people that you're closest with, close family, close friends, um, where you know you're going to be in contact on a regular basis and you don't always uh, wear a mask or keep two meters apart. When you are in those larger gatherings of uh, 50 people uh, out inside and up to 100 outdoors, uh, that's when you absolutely want to keep uh, keep your distance and uh, wear a mask whenever it won't be possible to, to keep two meters apart. Those are really useful concepts. I appreciate you uh, high highlighting them. There's certainly been a lot of confusion there. Uh, so I'll pause there, Dan. Thanks very much uh, to both and, and looking forward to any questions. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Thank you, uh, Warden Burkhardt Jessen and Mayor Holder. Well, uh, we do have a question in the queue right now. And uh, if you are a member of the media tuning in and you've got some questions in mind, now would be the time to uh, to put those into the forum so we can get those to the appropriate person for you. Uh, Dr. Mackey, the first question is for you this afternoon. It comes to us from Grant Demi at My FM Radio in Strathroy. Dr. Mackey, is there an update regarding the latest case in Strathroy Caradoc? We heard it's an employee at Strathmere Lodge. Is that accurate? Dr. Mackey, I think your microphone is muted. Of course it is. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, don't have any uh, cases at Strathmere Lodge. We generally don't uh, comment on specific new cases certainly when there's uh, a location that identified uh, we would try to avoid uh, uh, anything that might uh, be considered personal health information or disclose an identity um, at this point we don't have any facility outbreaks other than the one that i've mentioned at uh, london health science center victoria hospital uh, on the child and adolescent mental health unit um, no other outbreaks none of our um, retirement homes or long-term care homes are an outbreak at this point. Thank you, Dr. Mackey, um, just getting some clarification on our next question. Dr. Mackey, I would think it is uh, for you. It comes to us from Kerry McKee and CBC London. Uh, Dr. Mackey, what's your reaction to the federal government's deal with Pfizer and Moderno um, regarding a vaccine for COVID-19? And Dr. Mack, I think you yeah. is very committed to vaccines, uh, has been really proactive in the past, making sure that we've got a solid vaccine uh, pipeline for influenza vaccines. Um, at the moment, there are many vaccine trials uh, that are ongoing around the world. And of course, you know, Pfizer is a very credible source uh, of that sort of uh, research. Um, you know, it's positive to see uh, this sort of commitment, we're still very early in the world of searching for vaccines and it, and it may take some time and it may be uh, that a vaccine has, well, we, we don't know exactly at this point what sort of effectiveness it will have. So um, I think it's important for the federal government to open those lines of communication 
and start identifying those potential vaccines, making sure that if there is a supply available, that Canadians have access. Uh, but again, I think we're still very far from knowing exactly what that will mean to uh, people on the street. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. And a follow-up question from Kerry McKee. Uh, Dr. Mackey, are you concerned that a recent study shows that a large portion of Canadians are not prepared to get a vaccine if, we're, if one were to become available? Yeah, so, you know, we've dealt with the issue of vaccine hesitancy on a number of vaccines for many years. It's always a problem. And we've seen uh, misinformation and conspiracy theories around COVID really spreading very rapidly uh, over the past few months. You know, my, my hope is that when an actual vaccine becomes available, uh, that people's attitudes start to shift. It's quite different from you know to to say when there is no vaccine available well i'm not worried about that i'm not going to get a vaccine uh, and then when there is a vaccine available sometimes attitudes shift you know certainly when we went through the h1n1 swine flu pandemic in 2009 uh, demand for that a vaccine was very high and uh, i would hope and anticipate that that occurs with any covid vaccine that's effective and safe as well, well thank you very much dr Mackey, for uh, that answer um, well, lady and gentlemen, that does bring us to the end of our questions for this afternoon. So, uh, so with that, we will say uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your information and your thoughts. We will be back for our next virtual uh, media briefing on Friday afternoon, right here at two o'clock. So watch for the link so that you can uh, join us on Friday afternoon at two o'clock. So that's it from us and we'll see you all again on Friday. Have a great rest of the day.